What if I told you this little gadget? The PicoCalc hides a major design flaw that could absolutely ruin your day. But what if I also told you it's the heart of one of the coolest projects I've built all year? I'm Jay Blank and today I'm going to show you the danger hiding inside and the one project that makes this a must have anyway. This device from a company called Clockwork Pi feels like a portal back to the golden age of computing. It isn't just a calculator, it's a portable, hackable, open source computer for makers and anyone who misses the tactile joy of 80s pocket computers. For about $79, you get a kit that you build yourself powered by the super versatile Raspberry Pi Pico. The idea is to give you a device that lets you code in MMBasic, experiment with Lisp, run a Unix-like OS, and even play retro games, all in a gadget that fits in your hand. It's pretty much a tinkerer's dream. But as I found out, that dream can become a nightmare with one wrong move. So what exactly is the PicoCalc? Well, at its core, it's a Raspberry Pi RP2040, which is a dual core ARM chip that's become a big favorite in the maker community. It's paired with a sharp 4-inch square IPS display, a wonderfully backlit QWERTY keyboard, an SD card slot, speakers, and a headphone jack. It's all housed in a chunky retro style plastic shell and powered by a pair of 18650 batteries that you have to supply. Now, the entire philosophy here is hackability. The main board is designed to let you swap out the standard Raspberry Pi Pico for other versions like a Pico W for Wi-Fi or even the newer Pico 2 for more power. There are GPIO pins on the sides and it practically is begging you to connect sensors and motors, turning it into the brain for any physical computing project. But on the software side, the promise is even bigger. It ships with an old school basic interpreter, which is pretty cool right out the box, but its real power lies in its versatility, supporting a huge amount of languages like C and C++, MicroPython, Lua, Rust, and JavaScript. So this really isn't some lockdown gadget, it's more of an open platform. It's a cost-effective little terminal that just wants you to bend it to your will, whether that's for learning to code, building IoT devices, or just reliving the glory days of home computing. It really feels like it was designed by people who also love to tinker for people who love to tinker. And as a developer, that's what really got me so excited. When the box shows up, the excitement only grows. You know right away this isn't a mass market device because you have to build it yourself. But honestly, that's half the fun. Assembly is simple and satisfying, taking maybe five to 10 minutes. You mount the tiny speakers, connect the screen's delicate ribbon cable, snap the Raspberry Pi Pico into place, and pop in the clicky keyboard module. The whole thing fits together inside this solid plastic shell, but the screen is protected by a glass cover, giving it this chunky, almost nostalgic feel like an old Game Boy, but with a full keyboard. Once you pop in the batteries in the included SD card, it boots almost instantly into its own MM Basic environment. For anyone who grew up with an Apple II or a Commodore 64, this moment is pretty much pure magic. You're greeted by a command prompt just waiting for instructions. Typing print. Hello world. Just works and seeing it appear on the green and black display is a genuine thrill. 
you can use it as a basic calculator, write simple programs, and just enjoy the tactile feel of the keyboard. In those first few hours, the PicoCalc is everything it promises. A charming, self-contained world of retro computing. It's a small portal to a time when computers felt simple and more personal. The hardware feels solid, the screen is bright and clear, and the open-ended software makes the possibilities feel endless. So I was totally sold, and I was ready to call this the coolest gadget of the year. But then I decided to tinker. When I first got the Pico Calc, my first big project was to swap in a Pico W for Wi-Fi. So I opened the case, took everything apart, and carefully put it all back together. I powered it on, and I saw that something was wrong with my screen. I first thought it was the firmware, so I tried the default firmware, and I saw really bad screen tearing. A quick search of the community forums revealed a horrifying truth. I actually wasn't the first one. This is the PicoCalc's big catch. Here's the problem. The screen is shockingly fragile and its fit in the case creates a huge point of failure during assembly. Well, the screen isn't securely seated, so if it moves even slightly while you're installing the other parts, Closing the case will put direct pressure on the edges of the glass and crack it. It's an easy and costly mistake to make. This flaw really undermines the device's identity. It's a product for tinkerers that punish you for tinkering in the most basic way. Getting a replacement screen isn't too bad though. You just have to email support and it takes about two weeks for the screen to arrive. Since getting my replacement, I've used a simple tape trick. Just a small piece of tape on the back of the LCD panel to hold it firmly in place during assembly and it has never broken again. It's a simple fix, but one you have to know about beforehand. That moment of failure is so deflating, it makes you want to toss the whole thing in a drawer. It literally almost made me write this device off completely until I decided to do something about it. The hardware had so much potential that was being held back. That's when I decided to add PicoCalc support and a custom firmware called PicoWare. PicoWare is my open source answer to the PicoCalc's limitations. I wanted to transform it from a simple basic interpreter into a modern connected pocket computer. Installing it involves putting your PicoCalc into bootloader mode and then dragging a file onto the device. Then when you turn it on, this little offline computer is now a powerhouse. With a Pico W installed, PicoWare gives you a suite of Wi-Fi apps like a network scanner and connector. Some apps can even pull live weather data from APIs. This is a device that 10 minutes ago was totally offline and now it's pulling data from the internet. But it goes deeper. I designed PicoWare to be a modular platform. Users can create their own programs directly on the device, but it also comes loaded with apps for games like Doom, Tetris, security utilities, and even functions that let you use the PicoCalc as a wireless keyboard and mouse for your computer. It's not just one project, it's beginning to be an entire ecosystem. But most importantly, my goal for PicoWare was to support multiple development environments like MicroPython and C or C++. I think that lowers the barrier to entry, inviting a huge community of developers to start creating without needing to learn a niche language like MMBasic. In my opinion, this is the redemption. The fragile screen is definitely a terrible hardware problem, 
But I think that PicoWare is the software solution that makes the risk worth taking. It unlocks the potential that Clockwork Pi imagined, and it proves the device isn't just a product, it's a living, evolving platform driven by passionate builders who won't let a hardware flaw stop them from making something amazing. So after the roller coaster of excitement, disappointment, and creation, what do I think about the Pico Calc? Should you still buy it? Well, as someone who has poured hundreds of hours into its software, I can't give a simple yes or no. It just really depends on who you are. But let's be clear, if you're a student looking for a reliable graphing calculator for math class, this definitely isn't it. The calculator functions are pretty basic compared to a TI-84, and the risk of breaking it makes it definitely a non-starter for a classroom. If you just want a polished gadget that works out of the box, you should probably look elsewhere. However, if you're a hobbyist, a programmer, a tinkerer, or a retro computing fan, then my answer is a definite yes. But you have to go in with your eyes open. You must be aware of the screen's fragility and treat it with extreme care, especially during assembly. You have to accept that this is a niche product from a small company and that journey might have some bumps. But if you can accept that risk, what you get for $79 isn't just a calculator, you're pretty much buying an endlessly hackable pocket computer. You're getting a platform with a great filling keyboard, a nice little screen, and a direct line to physical computing through its GPIO pins. Its true value isn't what it does out of the box, but what I and the community through projects like PicoWare have turned it to. It's a MM basic machine one day, a retro gaming device the next, and a Wi-Fi weather station the day after. So yeah, the PicoCalc definitely has some serious flaws, but its potential, thanks to its open source soul, feels almost limitless. It's definitely a true successor to the pocket computers of the past, a device that begs you to be curious, creative, and get your hands dirty. And for that, I think it's worth every bit of the risk. I'm Jay Blanked. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see more deep dives into the PicoCalc or PicoCalc tutorials, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Until next time, peace.